As many students head back to the classroom, many are returning to schools that are understaffed. The National Center for Education Statistics says 44 percent of public schools will report teaching vacancies at the start of this year. And more than half of those were from resignations. With thousands of teaching vacancies across the country, the nation appears to be reckoning with an exodus of educators. Joining us now to talk about this are two standout teachers. Lee Allen taught math, coached wrestling, and was Teacher of the Year in Georgia's largest school district. And Korsha Hassan taught elementary school and was the first Somali-American to be named Minnesota Teacher of the Year. It's great to have you both with us. And Korsha, I want to start with you because you've said that you did not leave the profession entirely willingly. What for you was the breaking point? The breaking point for me was continuously being devalued um, and not feeling like I could teach the truth and meet my scholars where they were. Um, and it was also just the idea that we, um, as a profession, didn't land here by any choice. Um, we didn't mysteriously come about this teacher shortage. Um, there has been a continuous devaluation of teachers um, and defunding of education for decades. Lee, does any of what she said resonate with you? I mean, what specific ways did, did COVID, the remote learning, the, the isolation, how did all of that change the students and how did that change your ability to teach? Yeah, I, I think you definitely saw the isolation in those formative teenage years cause a lot of negative mental health issues on students. And coming back into the classroom after COVID, School still wanted to keep up and make it appearances look like things were just as good as 2019. However, they're not. And when we don't reflect reality, and I think you're seeing a lot of teachers finally just kind of throw their hands up and say, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm not dealing with it anymore. Korsha, what about that? I mean, we talk about a teacher shortage. There are people who say what it really is, it's a, a pay and respect shortage. What do you make of that? I agree with that. Um, I think about how there is a salary shortage. There um, are incompetent wages for the, the work that we do. And I also feel like there's this expectation that we do free labor um, without any foresight or any thought about um, the families that we have and the other roles that we carry besides teaching. I'll also say that, you know, there's a lot of blaming students and um, uh, for them not showing up the way that they should. And I think the idea that, you know, COVID has really illuminated a lot of the systemic failure that um, we've been facing has just brought me more and more to come to the conclusion that um, we, we need to do better by our students, um, in particular our students of color. Would you have left the profession, Korsha, if you'd had the institutional support, if you'd had the resources you say you need? Absolutely. If I had the resources to meet the needs of my students and not feel like the burden of all of their needs fell on my shoulders, including food or housing um, and other resources, I would still be teaching. Teaching is a huge part of who I am. It's something that I've done for a third of my life, um, and I don't take it lightly. And, and Korsha, you have, and you spoke about this in our conversation, that there was an emotional toll to the work that was required of you as a Somali woman, as a Muslim woman, that there was emotional labor there that wasn't required of your colleagues. How did all of that sort of manifest for you? We call that the invisible tax. Um, it's the um, tax that I pay for showing up as myself unapologetically, teaching black history, teaching the truths uh, about our American history, and also um, uplifting all of my scholars, um, in particular my black and brown um, and indigenous scholars, uh, to see their full potential. And so a lot of that work is revolutionary. It's rare. Um, it's not common in the schoolhouse. And to do that work requires you to give a large part of yourself. You know, it, it sounds, Korsha, like being a teacher was the work that you were called to do. Did you experience any guilt in deciding to step away? significant guilt. Um, I was the only Somali teacher at my school. Uh, we have a large Somali population. In fact, in many of the schools that I've served for, I've either been the only Somali teacher or one of few black teachers. And so I knew that um, taking away that uh, ability for me to be a role model or a connector or a liaison to not just my students, but my community um, would be a huge loss. But I have really found joy in protecting myself and valuing who I am um, and choosing, choosing myself at the end of the day. Lee, as we wrap up this conversation, a lot of people focus on the pay part of this, and that's certainly important, but it sounds like in talking to the both of you that it's more than just the salary. Definitely. I, I think people should know that 
the repercussions of what's happening. We have a shrinking pipeline of students going to college and studying to become teachers. And even students in college that finish teacher preparation programs aren't going into the field. And a lot of the people that are staying, if they're in a bad situation, are just trying to hang on until they can get to retirement and they're not going to be as effective teachers. So you're losing the highest part of your talent pool, like, like we've seen here. Unfortunately, children are the ones that pay the price, but it's hard because as teachers, we have to take care of ourselves and we still have individual lives and feelings and we have mental health to worry about as well. So if things don't get better, I really do worry about the future. Well, it's really valuable to have the perspectives of two former teachers of the year, Lee Allen and Korsha Hassan. Thanks so much to you both. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.